Welcome to the Two Guys in a Cooler channel. Thanks for joining me on part four of Salts, Cures, and Vegetable Powders. Today, we're gonna to be wrapping up this series. And if you remember, in part one, we talked about salts, what they could do, what they couldn't do when it came to curing meat. In part two, we covered curing salts, like Instacure number one, Instacure number two, how to use them, the difference between nitrates and nitrites and their benefits when it came to curing meat. In part three, we covered vegetable powders like celery juice powder as an organic alternative to curing meats, uh, its pros and cons, you know, its limitations. And now we're going to be talking about something called nitrosamines. This is going to be the most controversial topic yet, and let's get right into it. So nitrosamines have been found to be carcinogens. All right, so let's just get that out there. Nitrosamines are not a good thing. Studies have shown that the nitrosamine formation has been found in things like cigarettes, uh, even e-cigarettes, especially when the liquid is nicotine. Things like cured meats and beer, some cheeses, pickles, salted fishes, all these have been found to contain nitrosamines. For the sake of this video, we're going to focus on nitrosamine formation in cured meats, specifically bacon. Bacon seems to be one of the biggest culprits when it comes to nitrosamine formations, primarily because of the temperature in which you have to cook bacon. Because bacon is cooked at such a high temperature, it accelerates the formation of these nitrosamines. And so we have to ask ourselves, how are nitrosamines formed? Well, first and foremost, in order for nitrosamines to be formed, you have to have unconverted nitrites. And then you have to have a structural molecule called an amine. And then finally, you need to have an acidic environment. When you put all three of these together, you create a perfect storm for the formation of nitrosamines. We know that nitrites are naturally occurring. Whether they're synthetic or organic, the body uh, processes them the exact same way. We also know that amines are found all throughout nature as well, whether they're on plants or on animals. We do know that there's a high amount of amines on animal muscle tissue. And so when you combine naturally or synthetic occurring nitrites with muscle tissue, you run the possibility of forming nitrosamines. The third element in which you need in order to make nitrosamines is an acidic environment. And while we naturally have that, that's our stomachs. Our stomachs are incredibly acidic, and that's where our food is going to go to digest. Of those three, there's only one element that we can technically influence, and that's the amount of unconverted nitrites. If we can somehow speed up the process in which nitrite converts into nitric oxide, then unconverted nitrites no longer becomes an issue. What studies have shown is that vitamin C is a natural antioxidant, and this particular antioxidant actually accelerates the way that nitrates and nitrites are converted into nitric oxide. So without getting too scientific on you, if you have nitrites, and vitamin C, those nitrites are gonna be converted much faster into nitric oxide, greatly reducing or eliminating the threat of nitrosamines. This is where it gets interesting. The USDA, in an attempt to try to reduce the amount of nitrosamine formation in cured meat specifically, is requiring commercial manufacturers of cured meats to add some sort of antioxidant to their product. Things like vitamin C, ascorbic acid, things like sodium erythorbate or sodium asorbate are added to commercially made cured meats in order to reduce or eliminate the possibility of nitrosamine formation. Here's where it gets completely crazy. In part three, we talked about celery juice powder. Natural celery has vitamin C, a natural antioxidant. But through the process of how celery juice powder is made, that particular antioxidant is not transferred over. And so celery juice powder is literally just a combination of salt with some nitrates and a lot of nitrites. And the reason that I'm telling you this is because the USDA doesn't recognize celery juice powder as a curing agent. It recognizes it as more of a flavoring ingredient. And so companies that use celery juice powder don't have to follow the same guidelines as companies that use commercially produced curing agents. Companies that use celery juice powder to make bacon are not obligated to add an antioxidant to their product. And so what this means for the consumer is that there's a potentially higher risk of nitrosamine formation in this organic bacon. So the answer to the nitrosamine dilemma is a cure accelerator. 
Cure accelerators are completely optional. They're not necessary, but if you are someone who is concerned with potential nitrosamine formation, then this may be something that you might want to look into. There's a product called sodium erythorbate. This particular product is probably the most common cure accelerator on the market. It is a salt from a stereoisomer of vitamin C. It's also an antioxidant, and so it's gonna preserve the color of your meat. It's gonna help it from oxidizing in the event that you're using like high temp cheeses, but more importantly, it's gonna accelerate the cure. And why that's important is because you're ensuring that the nitrites that are added are converted into nitric oxide, remediating the problem of nitrosamines. How cool is that? I'm gonna put a link in the description box to the products that we discussed in this video. Your cures, your special salts, celery juice powder, even your cure accelerators. And if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section below. Hopefully we've been able to shed a little bit of light on some topics that are generally quite confusing. If you got anything out of this video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell. We post new videos every single week on all sorts of different topics. If you like charcuterie, you're gonna love this channel as we have projects upon projects upon projects already lined up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.